Hi, I'm Dr. Rudy Cashman, the Medical Wellness Director of Lutheran Hospital at this time. I was a neurosurgeon 44 years, but I retired on July 1. But, uh, and now I feel I have a great job uh, teaching wellness uh, and uh, something that's been my passion probably 35 years or so. Uh, and just remember, I'm only 39 years old, although in April I'm celebrating my 39th anniversary of my 39th birthday. <laughs> and uh, let's have a little fun tonight. But this is a very interesting subject because uh, uh, I've been teaching how to eat properly. I wrote some books, Secret of the non and You go on Amazon, you can see, see uh, uh, my books there. Uh, frankly, everything about connecting the mind and the body, proper eating, stress, uh, exercise, and these things are great interest to me because uh, I'd say 35 years ago or so, I started noticing uh, that a lot of uh, symptoms that patients were complaining about, I could get them well uh, by coaching them, teaching them good uh, health habits, uh, and that everything, uh, all these huge x-ray reports, that everything really match with what they're complaining about. So it's been of great interest to me. I've done a great deal of uh, teaching about it uh, and a great deal of uh, reading about it, and I just frankly love this subject, and I think I've gotten a lot of people well, and I think I plan to get a, a lot more people well in the future. Today's subject is very interesting. The name of it is Grain brain, grain brain. Uh, it is, some interesting books have come out recently uh, which point out uh, the uh, problems with wheat and gluten that's uh, in wheat and then and a, a tremendous number of symptoms uh, and diseases and illnesses uh, that it causes. Uh, and it, it's, it's hundreds of illnesses, even higher rates of cancer, for example. And I explained that in great detail. Uh, the the uh, Grain Brain book written by David Perlmutter, uh, I have to have it here, show you the cover, is number one uh, bestseller list in New York Times. And I've personally met him. I've been in Naples, Florida. I've personally met him. I think it's a, a great book. Another one by Dr. Davis, a cardiologist, I encourage you to read, called Wheat Belly. Wheat Belly. And uh, it, it's interesting because uh, it uh, reiterates the history of wheat, uh, which is uh, uh, quite interesting. Uh, but specifically here, referring to the brain uh, for the moment, uh, brain has ended up about 100,000 uh, brain cells and uh, trillions of miles uh, of, of neuro, uh, neurotransmitters and nerves that, in, that interconnect, uh, uh, and they're affected, yes, by what we eat. They're affected uh, by uh, what we eat. Uh, there are more connections in, in our nervous system than there are stars in the sky. Wow, wow, yes, uh, and they're greatly influenced uh, by our diet. And the reason being is that we have a certain genetic structure uh, from many years uh, uh, from evolution. But we don't change our genetic and DNA structure, but 0.4% every 20,000 years. But the food we're eating, which was radically changed about 10,000 years ago when we started growing grains and domesticating uh, animals, uh, uh, the point being is that the genetic structure, what's on our fork, is not compatible with the net genetic structure of our bodies, and the body is revolting. We have a 70% obesity rate, overweight rate in this country, about a 35% obesity rate. Among the large Western nations, we have the most in the world. There are a few smaller nations, a few isolated islands where the obesity rate approaches 94, 95%. Uh, uh, a uh, recent article in the New York Times uh, uh, explained the Middle East and Saudi Arabia having a tremendous uh, problem because, because they're eating uh, different foods uh, than they used to. Their bodies are revolting. It's a genetic uh, revolt. 70% uh, of our brain is made from fat. And I'll review the history of sugar and fat, and we all think fat is terrible. Well, it turns out that, that for 30 years, Ansel Keys uh, from Minnesota had promoted that fat was the culprit of our high rate of vascular disease, heart disease, strokes, autoimmune disease, and cancer. Turns out he was wrong. It turns out he was wrong. And I'll tell you a story. It's, it's very uh, in interesting. And uh, so diseases can indeed be avoided by what you eat. 
we run an extremely high rate of type 2 diabetes in this country, and I explained that disease to in detail. Uh, we have maybe 35 million people with type 2 diabetes. We probably have another 100 million who, who are going to get it. Uh, it, it there are tremendous rates also in Mexico City, uh, uh, in, in Mexico, uh, who even put tax on, on, on uh, fast foods and sugar recently because diseases are getting out of hand. Uh, South Vietnam, uh, South Korea, uh, North Vietnam, uh, tremendous rates of obesity. Uh, and and, and uh, one of the main reasons really uh, is uh, our, wheat, our wheat products uh, because uh, they have been genetically changed. The wheat of yesterday is not the wheat of today. A wheat, say 200,000 years ago, was called einkorn. It, it grew on the stem of a plant in the ground. It was like, almost like a grass. The seeds were on the, on the stems, had 12 chromosomes. Yeah, a few hundred thousand years go by through hybridization, uh, natural hybridization, and, and selection, then it turned out to be called Emma. Emma, it had 24 chromosomes. Then in 1948, because the, the world was starving after the war, the Rockefeller Institute uh, in Mexico City, they, they put it there because they had two seasons. Uh, and a, and a, a Dr. Burlow, a, a nutritionist geneticist, studied it, and he was able to increase the yield of wheat 10 times. And the chromosomal structure totally changed. But he never checked it in humans. It went all over the world and the Chinese were able to grow eight times as much wheat and the people were no longer hungry. Uh, the only problem is they did not consider what it was doing uh, to their uh, bodies, especially in the long term. Uh, now we have probably 20,000 types of, um, uh, of wheat, but they don't genetically uh, uh, test them. Wheat used to be like eight feet tall. Now wheat uh, is about two feet tall, has a strong uh, stem. The yield increased 10 times. Uh, but wheat has in it also gluten. And you hear a lot today about gluten, gluten-free diet. Uh, and uh, I need to explain to you a little bit what it really means. Gluten's a protein in wheat. Okay, you take a wheat kernel, it has about 20% uh, protein uh, uh, in it. That's the, that's the gluten, an 80% carbohydrate. But the carbohydrate is amylopectin A. And I tell you, uh, there's, a, there's a problem with that. But the gluten itself is, is a problem. Uh, and what is the gluten? It's, the pro, it's a protein in the plant. If you take wheat flour, put water on it, uh, uh, mix it around a little bit, pour the water off, uh, you, could, you could knit, and that's what holds the bread together. You could really knit it almost in a ball and, and, and play tennis with, with the uh, uh, darn thing. But uh, when we eat wheat products, that gluten uh, uh, will punch holes uh, in our gut, and our immune system is, lays only one cell layer below, below our mucosa of our gastrointestinal tract, one cell layer. I mean, we, we're talking about micromillimeters, and there's the whole, and there is our immune system. The lymphatic system is right. One cell layer underneath is our immune system. So even the slightest destruction of the villi, the, 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 uh, that are in there with the little hairs uh, collecting uh, and trying to absorb vitamins, minerals, and, 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 and proteins and carbohydrates uh, to have a tremendous reaction to them, causing uh, a great deal of d diseases. The protein uh, in, in uh, uh, the gluten proteins, uh, glutenins and gliadins, you don't have to remember those uh, terms, but those are the protein, and there are many diseases based on that. And there's, his there's history to that. Now, the endosperm, which is 80% of it, is made of amylopectin A. And the, and the problem with that is amylopectin A uh, hits the bloodstream, does not increase the blood sugar level, does not increase the insulin level, uh, 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 and heads for the liver uh, and eats up the ATP and makes very low density LDL, the bad LDL, the uh, bad uh, cholesterol, the one that's burying in our arteries, uh, hooking up with uh, proteins and sugars uh, called ages in the blood system, depositing itself all over the body, causing aging, uh, dementia, uh, cancer, uh, and uh, of course obesity. So this wheat belly, which Dr. Davis is really writing about, that fat uh, is not sitting under the skin. That's the problem. 
the majority of that fat is not under the skin. Uh, it's sitting in the liver. It's sitting in the liver and in the pancreas and in the omentum around your guts. Some even hangs off the heart. Uh, and this will be the biggest cause of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It will be the biggest cause uh, of cryptogenic, cryptogenic cirrhosis of the liver. It will be the biggest cause of liver transplants in the future. So uh, when you see a, a, a pot belly, uh, you have to be concerned about fat deposits in the liver, and I've seen it for many years sitting in the scans, CTs, MRIs, identified it. So, and, and through laboratory testing, you can determine uh, whether you have fatty uh, liver or not, a very dangerous situation, which the most of the time leads right to uh, type 2 diabetes. See, type 1 diabetes is uh, where you don't make insulin. You, much more commonly found originally in children through autoimmune disease that starts the pancreas and they have no insulin, they waste away. As type 1 diabetes, we give them insulin uh, and now they can almost need normal lives. Uh, but type 2 diabetes uh, is it's generally related to metabolic syndrome, and I explain that to you, uh, and uh, being overweight or obese. What happens is we have 70 trillion cells, okay, uh, and these cells have receptor sites where a, foreign, where a substance in the body or that you take externally hits the receptor sites and that opens the gate to the cell, okay? Now we need sugar for energy, okay? But the sugar can't just go through the cell wall and door, the door has to be opened by insulin. So insulin, a hormone, uh, carries the sugar inside, but if you're overweight and your fats in your blood uh, are uh, too high, that makes these receptors sticky, and the insulin can't get the sugar there, and you can't get energy, and you can't live without energy, so the insulin level goes up. Uh, and you have to, a large amount of uh, insulin, but they run a sugar test on you, the HbA1c, and it's normal, and it's normal. You don't have diabetes, you're fine. But let me tell you, you're not fine. You're, you're, not, you're not fine because your insulin level is up. And the insulin level uh, cause, is an antibiotic hormone, causes obesity, leptin resistance, the one that stops you from depositing uh, fat, insulin resistance, the ones that keeps you from bringing sugar uh, into, into uh, uh, the uh, cell. Uh, so uh, in this beginning of, 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 of diabetes, you know, we diagnose type 2 diabetes uh, which is a killer because it goes heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, uh, uh, strokes, autoimmune disease, cancer. The beauty of it is, though, if you get to normal weight 90% of the time, you can get rid of your type 2 diabetes if you eat the right food. I rarely meet a patient that knows that, and that's sad uh, because the amount of money we can save probably a trillion bucks, a trillion bucks if we diagnose them very early. I have a book coming out shortly, I've written about 15 books there on Amazon, and, and the last one I have coming out really called The Golden Opportunity. <laughs> Isn't it the old golden opportunity if you were to diagnose somebody very early? So it's the blood work is important. Everybody's got to know the blood work, even as a teen, teenager. Heart disease begins at age two. I gave a lecture the, just the other day at a university, and I asked one of the students just to be dramatic about it, nothing insulting about it, as a no judgment zone here. I asked him what age he thought heart disease began. He's a college student. You know what he said? Age 35. Understandable. People don't know. The, then I asked, uh, spoke at another function uh, that, e that evening, uh, and a gentleman uh, uh, said, 25. So we do not know it begins at age two because the autopsy, the children in Bogalusa, Louisiana, for 40 years, Dr. Atwood did that and discovered heart disease uh, it starts at age two. So to get your blood work checked is very important. I could look at you. You could be a f normal weight and you look great. Matter of fact, for breakfast this morning, I met someone uh, from Hollywood who was visiting because the mother, mother was getting a great honor. Uh, and uh, she was telling me that uh, she's type 2 diabetic, although she was thin. What it is, uh, the blood works off. Uh, and then she told me, then I found out the reason. Uh, and her ancestry is an, 
there's some Indians in the history, and they have the thrifty gene, and they develop metabolic is something acquired uh, through evolution. See, a lot of animals around us, even today, they can store fat to make it through the winter, to make it through the winter. Uh, a, 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 penguin, a, 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 a penguin will store fat that they don't have to eat for six months. There are frogs who store fat uh, who can burrow down in the ground, live five years, eat nothing. Their metabolic rate goes down, their temperature goes down. So animals were able to store fat. There was a switch that was thrown on, uh, and, and, uh, they could, uh, and they needed the fat to survive. But we humans, we throw on the switch by eating the wrong food, but in our body, this, we don't know how to turn the switch off. So we become more obese and more uh, obese. But wheat uh, peculiarly, remember I said causes obesity because the amylopectin A, the 80% of the complex carb, uh, uh, when it hits the blood system, actually increases the blood sugar uh, and, uh, and uh, it uh, causes obesity. It goes to the liver and causes uh, de, de novo lipogenesis de novo lipogenesis, and so we become fat, but the fat is deposited in our organs, uh, not under the skin. Uh, which, and, and fat is not just something that sits there quietly, does nothing. Fat secretes 20 nasty chemicals, cancer chemicals, uh, that, that, that chemicals that cause dementia, chemicals that are combined with uh, proteins and sugars that are deposited in our joints. And that's the reason type 2 diabetics or almost anyone uh, can get all these hip transplants and knee transplants we're seeing on people uh, where, where they've had high insulin levels that inflamed their joints or they've, they've uh, taken sugar combined it with protein and, for, and for, formed uh, uh, what, what are called aggregate uh, end products. Uh, and these are called ages, and they are deposited in the brain and the skin, make, make us look older than we are. Uh, and get deposited in the joints and cause advanced arthritis, and we, and we need uh, joint uh, transplants. So when we say, give us our daily bread, uh, which is in, in the uh, uh, Bible, uh, it, we are, what we're eating today is not the bread of yesteryear. It's been genetically changed. Uh, when they studied the Mediterranean diet, say in the 40s and 50s, and Dr. Ansel Keys, remember he promoted the fat theory for 30 years, and people uh, b uh, believe it, he wanted a, a low-fat diet. When in reality we find out uh, that fat is not quite the enemy that we think it is. Uh, and, and, and his wheat products, uh, that if you want to lose 50 pounds in three months and do nothing except cut out wheat products, you probably lose 30, 50 pounds within three, four months. It's right in Dr. Davis's uh, book, uh, Wheat Belly, and I agree with it because I have, I have seen it. You know, the, the donuts and the muffins and the pancakes and the waffles. Uh, and uh, so uh, one out of 133 people uh, have celiac disease. That's the one main disease associated uh, with gluten, the protein. Allergy reaction, it punches, it punches hole in your gut, then you expose your, your food products uh, to the lymphatic system, to the immunity system, uh, and it reacts and causes diseases. A significant number of diseases, as Dr. Perlmutter in his book, Rain Brain, will tell you, are neurologic diseases, seizures, uh, de dementia, uh, rashes, heart disease, liver uh, disease, infertility, ovarian cancer, uterine cancer, uh, depression. You can go on and on, uh, probably a hundred different symptoms, but celiac disease, I mean, can, can be fatal, uh, can be fatal. There's a 30% cancer rate also associated uh, with uh, a gluten sensitivity. So the so it's one in 133. You diagnose it by running a gluten panel, uh, and, uh, and, but that won't pick up everybody. So some need a biopsy. That's the, the gold standard of it, but, but it's not totally riskless, but low risk. Uh, then some people have gluten sensitivity, seven, seven times as many. So we have a lot of people with gluten sensitivity. They don't know it. They have subtle symptoms. They don't need to cut out gluten when they eat totally. Uh, but... There are certain foods that cause them symptoms. Maybe they have seizures. Maybe they get headaches. 
Maybe that blood pressure increases. Maybe the blood pressure goes down. Uh, there's a great deal of type 2 diabetes where you have too much insulin in the blood associated with gluten sensitivity. The gluten sensitivity tests generally aren't run much. You have to send them out to an outside laboratory. One lab is you can go online to CYRIX, C-Y-R-I-X lab, and get the Area 3 test. Uh, that costs a bit of money. A lot of times insurance won't cover that one, but, you know, maybe $100, which is you know, significant. And, uh, but that test doesn't run a lot. But, but a lot of people have gluten sensitivity, uh, and, uh, and the things are, are missed. They go on and on. The, the average time to diagnosis of celiac disease and gluten sensitivity, 10 to 20 years. It's shameful. We're just barely starting to pay attention to this. And especially, I think it's important for neurologists to keep in mind uh, this uh, book of David Perlmutter, who uh, I reread the book again for the second time. Uh, it, it, the number of neurologic diseases that are associated uh, uh, with uh, the uh, reaction to gluten and, and wheat products is an unbelievable um, uh, number of them. So if you have some autoimmune, quote, degenerative disease of a nervous system, get a gluten checked. I, matter of fact, at Starbucks, I met yesterday a lady, and God must have put her there, uh, and, and she's sitting with the girl. They're working on the computer. They're going to get some lectures and ask my advice. And she brought up her own story. Uh, she had been uh, to a neurologist and, and, and really was in a wheelchair, living in a nursing home, quite young, about 40 years old. Uh, and they and did an MRI scan, so three or four lesions, but they were all in the head. And she, on her own, did some researching and some reading. This was before Perlmutter's book, uh, and, and decided to go gluten-free. I'm not even sure she had a test run. Uh, her provider didn't want to run the test. Well, uh, you know, if you think it's going to help you, do it. And, uh, uh, but he never, the tests were never run. So that was maybe uh, 10, year, 10 years ago. And she's still being followed by the same uh, neurologist, but all her symptoms have cleared up. And if you look at Pearl Moore's book, and she didn't have that book available, that's the exact picture of what she's talking about. It shows the MRI with all these white spots, and, and MS will do that, but so will gluten. Gluten will do that. So to have gluten tests run, I think, is important. To me, I think it should be part of routine uh, physical testing, uh, but it's not. The other thing that I don't see a lot of, I think is critical, is to get your insulin level. You see, remember I talked about the HbA1c? That, that's a protein that combines with sugar. Uh, and if you're above 5.5, you know, you get, you get oh, 6. You can pick the figure there. You have type 2 di diabetes. Uh, but uh, be remember, before the blood sugar goes up, remember I showed you the cell and the receptors? Before the sugar goes up, the insulin level is up. So you could predate the elevated sugar by, by a long, by a long way. Uh, so to get, uh, uh, if you're going to do a physical, you ask for an insulin test. Ask for an insulin test because you may, treat, you may predate your diagnosis of type 2 diabetes by, th by 20, 30 years. Uh, the reason being is during the 20 years to your diabetes, you have high insulin levels, and that inflames your arteries, inflames your brain, inflames your joints, uh, increased rates of cancer. You can avoid all those illnesses by early testing, and that's the reason for, for the book I wrote on there, The Golden Opportunity. It'll be Amazon six weeks probably. I'm done with it. They're just editing it a little bit right now. That's a golden opportunity to get a serum insulin test. You can get it through a two-hour glucose tolerance, but just if your doctor fasted you for eight hours and the next day got a serum insulin and, and your blood sugar, uh, that'll help a, great, help a great deal to catch you early. It's prevention. That's the reason I'm for blood testing. Six-year-old, 10-year-old, 16-year-old, 20-year-old, 25-year-old, 30-year-old. You can look great to me, but I don't know your blood work. I don't know your blood work. It's just like the person I met yesterday. Beautiful blonde, real thin. What's her blood work? She looks very healthy, but she's telling me she's uh, quite young, a couple of kids, that she's type 2 diabetic, perfectly thin. So her blood work must be off, I'm guessing. And, uh, uh, and it, it, it's a blood work uh, uh, that determines your health, in terms of health. So th this is uh, a very uh, uh, interesting. And this patient at Starbucks, isn't a very interesting story? self-diagnosed herself essentially, and has cured her disease. She was perfectly normal, 
perfectly normal. And I think it was the, uh, the uh, combination uh, of the elevated blood sugar from the amylopectin A uh, and the body forming a protein around it and forming these uh, aggregate uh, uh, glucose, these uh, advanced uh, glycation end products, AGE, advanced glycation end products, uh, which uh, they never die out. Uh, we all form some every day. It's from, from energy metabolism, but people who eat a lot more and metabolize energy a lot more and have a lot more elevated sugars, they have tremendous large amounts of ages, so they look older, they get cataracts sooner, they get cancer sooner, uh, they develop vascular disease sooner, they develop dementia sooner. There's a high rate of memory loss associated with type 2 diabetes. Some, are, some people are starting to use the word in the, in the medical literature of type 3 diabetes. Yeah, type 3 diabetes because of these ages, this protein in these sugars, some elevated sugars, are deposited in your brain, are depositing in your, in your brain. They want to call it, it's so common, so common, they want to call it type 3 uh, 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 diabetes. And uh, that's very, uh, very uh, 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 interesting. Last night I was at a dinner, man, you know, Dr. Cashman, what do you eat? I said, I eat seafood. All the food I see, I eat, okay? We gotta have a little humor. I have another joke for you a little later. And I, obviously I don't, I select my food very carefully. Not that I was dead. Uh, uh, and so we, we mentioned before about the genes and the food, that the f food on your fork is genetic information. It reacts to your genetic structure and our bodies are not used to this genetically altered food, and our bodies are revolting. One out of two people in this area have diabetes. That means that pre-diabetic or early pre-diabetic are going to be type 2 diabetes. One in three uh, in the next five years are going to become type 2 diabetes. Remember all diseases and illnesses I associate with that? That's 90% or higher stoppable, preventable, and reversible. That's the good news. That's all over the books of Esseltine, uh, Dean Ornish, Dr. Bernard, Dr. Furman. That's all over their books. Uh, Dr. Perlmutter, uh, Dr. Davis, my own books on, on, on uh, Amazon. I mean, that's the great news, but we have to act on it. I went to two weddings in the last few months, one at Huntington, one at Kenderville. I, I almost had to leave because uh, all the knowledge I have, I see it. Uh, uh, the unbelievable obesity rates we have in this country unbelievable rates and people don't see it. You know, they, they say it's in my genes. No, it's not in your genes. It is not in your genes. It may be located in your genes, but <laughs> it's not in your genes. Uh, uh, it, it is uh, what you're eating is responding to your genes. So we see a whole family may be overweight. That's not in their genetic structure. They're all eating the same food. They're all eating the same food. It's well proven. There's a no judgment zone. I work out at Planet Fitness now every day. So it's no judgment zone. And, and I love that term because we're not judging. I'm trying to save people's lives here. It's that important. So we talk about this gene reaction. We called it neutrogenomics. Uh, Dr. Lustig, L-T-I-G, Fat Chance, a book he wrote. Very good book to read. Uh, he totally, this is totally the way he speaks. So what are some of the neurological diseases caused by wheat? Uh, ADHD, which you hear a lot about how kids get hyperactive, stress, headaches, migraines, depression, type 2 diabetes, uh, epilepsy, uh, loss of concentration, loss of memory, uh, insomnia, all kind of intestinal problems. See, celiac disease is not just about intestinal problems. Gluten sensitivity is not just about intestinal problems. Uh, irritable bowel, uh, ulcerative colitis, uh, Crohn's disease, all run a pretty good rate uh, of, of gluten sensitivity. So everybody with ulcerative colitis uh, and Crohn's disease should be tested. Not all of them, but 20, 30 percent of them, if they cut out gluten, the disease might go away. It's all over the literature, not that it's being done. Uh, overweight obesity is related to, to uh, like I said, if you stop eating uh, wheat products, uh, you'll drop 30, 50 pounds if that's what you need to lose. Six months easily, maybe, so, maybe sooner. Uh, maybe sooner, uh, and, uh, and, and depression associated uh, w uh, with it uh, too. Uh, and these inflammatory products, uh, which are, are caused uh, by the uh, gluten, uh, inflame the arteries, your brain cells, 
they, they pick up the sugar from these ages, deposit in your cells, deposit in your skin, uh, make you look over, cause rashes. Uh, so the problem is we're not eating. The, the wheat of today is totally different. It has much more protein in it, uh, so we become much more reactive and allergic uh, 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 to it. Uh, and, and the U.S. diet uh, today ha has in it too many sugary products. That's really the main problem. So you want to eat well. It's, it's not that difficult. I mean, watch the amount of uh, wheat products you're eating, uh, 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 number, number one. Uh, and uh, uh, number two, uh, avoid sugar. For all the diets you can name, from Atkins uh, to, to Ornish to Esseltine to to Furman, to uh, Cashman, to the Sears diet, the Atkins diet, there's one thing in common to every way of eating, sugar, sugar. Uh, and uh, sucrose, this is very important, I'm going to tell you, sucrose, table sugar, is 50% glucose, okay? It's 50% fructose. Yeah, I never knew that. I never knew that until maybe a year or two ago. It's fructose, the fruit. The, the fructose and fruit, same darn thing, metabolize similarly. Yeah, but our, uh, fruit's a bit safer because of vitamins and minerals and fiber. Two or three pieces of fruit, I think it's okay, but 10 pieces, you're going to become fat. And I'm going to explain to you why. Glucose hits the bloodstreams, rapidly absorbed, raises the blood sugar, 20% goes to the liver, 20% to the brain. The brain uh, feeds mainly on glucose, 80% goes uh, to the muscles forms glycogen or use up as energy, okay? Certainly, if you eat a tremendous amount just of pure glucose, uh, if too much, it'll be deposited as, as fat and through lipodegenesis, new, new fat in the liver. But then you have fructose. Now, glucose and fructose, the chemical formula is C6H12O6. That's glucose's formula. That's fructose's formula. But how come it's metabolized differently in the body? It's the same. It's the same, except one's a hexagon, the other one's a pentagon, so the body uh, looks at it a bit differently. Plus, uh, their, their carbon, hydrogen, oxygen atoms are uh, located differently uh, in the molecule a little bit, so the body identifies it differently, but the chemical form is the same. So when we talk about glucose, how is fructose metabolized? Fructose goes to, goes to the uh, bloodstream, doesn't uh, increase the, the uh, insulin level, doesn't uh, increase their blood sugar level, so it goes straight to the liver, eats up your energy molecule, ATP, uh, and then forms very low density LDL, uh, which uh, is the LDL that burrows in your artery uh, and, and, and also deposits uh, uh, fat. Uh, so the, fruc the fructose, so these two guys are twins, they're the same chemical pharma, so sugar's not good, but fructose is worse, it's worse. So I just finished writing a book, and your name of it, you'll love this title. Fructose, <laughs> the evil twin. Isn't it the only evil twin? That's the one that makes, uh, that, uh, makes fatty liver. Uh, and also, uh, it, the fructose combines with protein from the liver uh, and forms these ages. These ages we talked about, these advanced glycation end products, seven times some people think in one book, I read a hundred times more commonly than regular sugar, sugar would do. So fructose is destructive. So you need to know the fructose content of your food. There's almost some fructose in everything, spinach, everything, but it's very low, uh, very low rate. But a piece of carrot cake, 50 grams of fructose. That was the end of my carrot cakes. Oh my God. You can eat 35 grams a day it's about, because we need some. You get an apple has eight grams. So there's a table. Uh, End of my book, uh, Fructose Evil Twin, about 20 pages, tell you the fructose content of every food and restaurant foods will all be in there. It, it, you can also find it in Richard Johnson's uh, book, uh, Sugar Fix, Sugar Fix, very good book. Uh, you can find it in there. And uh, you, need, you need to pay some attention to that. So, the, so uh, sugar is a toxin, okay? But fructose is a poison. Is that poison? Causes fatty liver, uh, increases ins 
in, causes insulin resistance, leptin resistance, helps deposit ages in your joints, causes arthritis, causes dementia, causes uh, cancer, autoimmune disease, rashes all over, all over the body. So, I mean, that's very interesting. So to avoid wheat products, uh, then sugar. I mean, you need to avoid uh, sugar practice. Now, you, you know, you think uh, that uh, fat is your enemy. This for 30 years, Ansel Keys, for 30 years, Ansel Keys is telling the world uh, that fat is your enemy. Uh, and well, it turns out he just happened, happened to be wrong. The, the essential fatty acids, which are the fats you need to take in, like omega-3s, and I explained that in more detail. Uh, my TV show last night, my fact on Access TV, same show as this, uh, was on last night. And the good fats, there are good fats. And how did they discover that? Well, there was a, there was a Dr. Bang <laughs> and Dr. Dyerberg uh, about the 1960s went and studied the Eskimos in Greenland. They sailed on a few boats, a very adventurous trip, uh, and they drew their blood. The, the Eskimos were eating blubber and seals and fish and whales and 50% fat diet, but they were healthy. Hardly any vascular disease. Now, how the heck do you explain that? And that's what they're trying to do. And they brought with them uh, what's called liquid gas chromatography. It was an instrument that were used in, in gas, to check gasoline, how much water was in it. Uh, so they took that machine and studied the fats. And they had a, there was a blip in there, but they couldn't identify it as to what that was. They then realized there weren't just saturated and unsaturated fats, you know, which are fats with hydrogen or, or uh, uh, without hydrogen good and bad fats. That's all about they knew. But then they started dividing in, in, into uh, you know, uh, monosaturated fats, unsaturated uh, fats, essential fatty acids, omega-3, omega-6. And, and, and they saw the split, didn't know what it was. So they took it to the most famous person in the world on studying fats, Mark Harnman, in Minnesota. And he immediately identified, and that turned to be the uh, cosinoid, ICO means uh, uh, 20 uh, in Greek, uh, and identified it that this is probably the essential fatty acid uh, that, that the Eskimos had in their blood, and that's why they were so healthy. So that was studied a great deal further. They made five trips, actually, to Greenland, and, uh, and, and they uh, wrote a medical paper, uh, eventually, uh, obviously a seminal pa paper, uh, speaking about this. And this is when our knowledge of the good fats came out. So now we realize that there that indeed there are good fats. It's not fat that's killing us. Obviously, we're severely overweight to eat a lot of uh, fatty food, uh, even uh, organic fatty food. Uh, you can, that's high energy. That, that wouldn't be a great thing. But, but we, we need to pay less, less attention to it. It's sugar, specifically the evil to end fructose, that is your enemy, and wheat uh, and, and, and the gluten and the, and the gluten uh, products. They are your enemy. So... Uh, the, uh, so they studied them uh, and, and, and determined uh, that you always hear, I need to take some fish oil, but why, why do you do? Uh, we have essential fatty acid. That means you've got to take them in. We don't make them in our body. You've got to take them in. And why are they so important? I'll tell you why. We have 70 trillion cells, okay? Before we had a heart and a lung, and a circuitry system, how did, how did living things communicate throughout their body through multicellular animals? I mean, let's face it, we, you know, we have snails and, you know, a couple hundred uh, 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 different type of cells. I mean, you know, it's, 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 creatures all have a different number of our cells to them. And, uh, and, and uh, it was determined they, that they do it through... Uh, these essential fatty acids, eicosanoids, they jump from cell to cell. They're in the membranes of these cells. There's cholesterol in every cell in your body. That's part of the eicosanoid uh, system. Your brain, uh, for, for example, a uh, child's brain, to have the largest child's brain and mother's uh, milk is full of fat. It's full of fat. The best thing for a big brain for a child is mother's milk till age two. Rarely do we see that today, uh, but that builds the largest uh, brain because it, she, she makes cholesterol. She makes good fats. Uh, the omega-3s, let's recognize some terms, um, okay? Let's say uh, omega-3, you know, fish oil, uh, nuts, you can get it there. Uh, EPA, okay? 
and DHA. DHA is a 20 carbon fatty acid, and that's the one that, uh, that for example, uh, a hummingbird will use and can move its wings extremely quickly because they're full of DHA. They study the legs, which don't move as fast. They don't have as much DHA. That's the essential fatty acid that jumps from cell to say, is from cell to cell and increases the speed of neuroconduction. So it's used in the nervous system, it's used in nerves, uh, and so uh, the, these omega-3s are the anti-inflammatory in the, in, the, in the terms, and when you get a supplement, it's the EPA and the DHA, okay? Uh, then we have essential fatty acids, which are not as friendly to omega-6s, and that's the DGLA, arachnidinic acid, uh, are, are the ones that are pro-inflammatory. But we actually do need some of them because sometimes uh, if you get infection, you need some inflammation, and, and the omega-6s will do that. So we need some. The ratio between uh, omega-3s and 6 should be about 1 to 1, 2 to 2. You know what it is in America? 10 to 15 to 1, 6 over 3. Our nation is inflamed because of my knowledge. Uh, when I see an uh, overweight, out of shape person, to me, they look on fire. So I'm going to a wedding and 80% and, and of the people are seriously overweight. Uh, I, I feel like I'm sitting in a building on fire. Yeah. The body is inflamed, inflaming the artery, inflaming the brain, inflaming the in, 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 in intestines, inflaming the joints. These are inflammatory uh, uh, d diseases. Uh, and, and we're like 10 to 1, 15 to 1. We need more, be 2 and 2, 2 and 3. So uh, what I recommend in terms of the good uh, omega-3s, we need some omega-6s. Remember I said that. Uh, you can get them from fish, uh, and, and from uh, fish out of the ocean, not fish from a farm. So when you eat fish, you've got to ask, where's it from? And there's some famous restaurants in town here where all the fish is from a pond, where it's been, been fed with genetically altered corn, genetically altered wheat, carbon products, chicken litter, animal products. They put it right in the pond. It's real muddy. And they want to fatten up the fish because they get paid more for that. Uh, uh, and foie gras, for example, fatty liver, uh, where they uh, fatten up geese, uh, for example. Uh, and, and, and then uh, you eat it. What do you think they used to do that? Uh, uh, corn products. Uh, wheat uh, uh, products, uh, products that have had a lot of hormones and pesticides and herbicides. Uh, corn today uh, is full of omega-8s uh, uh, because it's genetically altered. You can't eat the corn from a farm in Iowa. 90% of it is, is meant for, to fatten up animals. It's, it's not meant for human uh, consumption. So you got to find out, where's the fish from, sir? And in town, I know the restaurants where are, and some of them have fancy names on it. You know, you'll say, like, uh, fish from Scotland. They are not from Scotland, because I ask them. Uh, the fish is from a pond. Yes. And, uh, and, uh, but there are some good restaurants in town that have it. Uh, the reason you don't want that fish from a farm pond is full of omega-6s. It'll cause inflammation in your body. You need to know that. And the same with uh, meat products that, are, that have in them cancer factors and, 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 and anti uh, and ages in them right uh, in the meat. You've got to find out where's this meat from? Is it from a beef that's eating grass? Or is it from the typical beef that we see today that's been fed grass for six months and put in cages about five or six at a time? They teach it to eat corn because they don't want to eat, they don't want to eat corn. They're going to teach them to eat corn. They want to give them corn because it's cheap. The government supports the price. The government supports the price of sugar and the price of corn. Isn't that pathetic? It's pathetic. And that's what stuff is killing us and our taxes pay for it. Makes no, absolutely no sense to me. So they fatten the beef up, they put it in a cage 150 days, 150 days, they live on their own excrements, they use pesticides because there's bugs obviously in there, uh, and they give them hormones and uh, pesticides and uh, herbicides and chemicals, and then you eat the steak, okay? I didn't say it, it totally against uh, meat eating at all, but it needs to be, you know, uh, meat that comes from a friendlier farm, a friendlier, an organic uh, meat, for example. Uh, and, uh, uh, and you can find out, you have to ask the certain stores that sell more of it. Otherwise, you're eating uh, products with a, a lot of uh, arachnoid acid, so just making yourself sick and full of fat. Most of, uh, a lot of these foods are uh, anyhow. But to eat some lean meat, I'm perfectly fine with that. 
But how do you get some more good fats? Uh, get, take a supplement, you know, with 350 milligrams of DHA and EPA and, and, uh, and, and uh, about 1,000 milligrams altogether. Uh, take a fish oil capsule every day. I do. I did. It's a very small capsule. Take some vitamin D, 2,000 IU units. Uh, very good. Maybe a multivitamin. But I tell you, that's about all you need. That's about all you need in supplements. Don't take 100 supplements. You want to get your minerals and vitamins and the good stuff uh, out of uh, the symphony, uh, the mosaic uh, of the foods that you're eating because the interaction of the vitamins and the minerals and the 25,000 phytochemicals is where your health is located. To take them as isolated things, they don't work as good. You want to take them as their interaction. Foods of color, although mushrooms... And onions uh, don't have color, but are so full of phytochemicals, they're extremely healthy. If you want to cut your breast cancer rate about 40%, have a, a raw piece of onion and a mushroom on top, eat it every day. Extremely healthy. A lot of women don't know that, and, and, and uh, uh, I think it's critical. 30% of breast cancer associated with being overweight and obese. 70% of uterine cancer is related to being overweight and obese. I know I confirmed it. It's in the literature. I can tell you the page, 72, Supreme Immunity by Dr. Furman. I had it confirmed by OBGYN special at Lufthansa Hospital recently. Uh, she confirmed what I said, yet most women I meet don't know that. So it's important that we get this critical, that we get this uh, 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 information out. So what tests should, should you run? Uh, fasting blood sugar. Remember I said multiple testing. You're only as good as your biometrics. I'll check your tests in three years, baloney to that. You get, get it done once a year and if you're sick every three months. That's slightly expensive. Slightly, not very expensive. That's where your health is located so you can act on it. Uh, so fasting blood sugar, uh, an HbA1c, just check the sugar three months out. Remember the protein uh, associates with the sugar th that measures your blood sugar for three months out. Uh, and, and it's a good uh, test for aging, actually. You will see how body is aging. Look at your HbA1c. If it's 9 or 10, you get a problem. And, uh, and uh, your lifespan may not be long unless you do something about it and bring it down with your diet. It's not always that simple, but it can definitely uh, be done. But re and remember, I want your serum insulin checked because... When insulin levels is up, your blood sugar may be normal. We would catch your illnesses extremely early. And that, another good test is a fructosamine. That's just like the uh, HbA1c, but it only measures about three weeks. So if there been changes in your diet, I changed my diet, I'm fasting, whatever you change in three weeks, you can check very quickly what your average blood sugars have been through fructose. I mean, the normal is 188 to 223. Uh, and your HbA1c, remember, 4.8 to 5.4. Uh, some people think you're diabetic at 5.5. A few think it's 6. But there's no magical, you know, one, mil, one tenth below or above, I'm diabetic, not diabetic, baloney. I mean, it's a continuum. It's a continuum. Uh, homocysteine, which measures your inflammation, like CRP, uh, is important. Remember, I, I look at people who are overweight and uh, type 2 diabetic uh, and are sick. Uh, uh, their bodies are on fire, and CRP and homocysteine measure that fire. Uh, so if that's seven or eight or something, it needs to be under three um, in terms of a CRP. You better get to work or find out what the problem is. Y you might ch also check uh, your omega-3 level in the blood. It's really done, but be interested to see how many of the good fats are you, eat are you eating. Remember I said, fat's not quite the enemy unless you're overweight as you think it is, uh, and we need the good fats. What's a critical thing in the way you eat, the absolute critical thing is, even a, a, above the wheat, the critical thing is sugar is a poison, fructose is toxic. Those are the figures you need to look at. Uh, how much sugar are I eating every day and you'll lose weight very quickly. And get your gluten sensitivity test and the Cerex 3 if you want to know if you're gluten sensitive. I think it's pretty important. I'm having mine checked uh, because I and some of my grown children have a lot of cold sores. Well, maybe it's stress. We always thought of stress. Uh, but then again, that it can be a sign of gluten sensitivity. Maybe we, we, we're gluten sensitive. And it's genetic. Remember I said it's highly genetic. I didn't mention that before. A gluten sensitivity uh, still like is highly genetic. So uh, to get some genetic testing there, I think, would be important. It made it a little more expensive. Uh, and then uh, get your 
HDL, that's the good cholesterol, the one that cleans your arteries, okay, the HDL, and triglyceride ratio. Triglycerides are more important th th than your LDL level, frankly, uh, because triglyceride level, uh, it's, it's the fat of, from the triglycerides, the th three uh, 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 chemicals there uh, that combine uh, with uh, the fat in your blood, and, and you know your triglyceride level is, is, is critical because if that level is high, uh, that indicates uh, your metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome, which probably 150 million people in this country got, uh, is, is uh, enlarged waistline. Uh, you can measure, you know, if you look at the body mass index by your height and weight uh, multiplied times two. You get uh, tables on the internet, find out if. Uh, uh, like like uh, morbid obesity for man would be over 40, okay? Normal uh, would be 25, uh, t uh, 25, overweight 25 to 30 for man. For woman, it, you know, it's five less uh, to check, see would you look at a graph and check the kids. Kids need to have this checked. If your doctor doesn't do that, you need to find a different uh, pediatrician or doctor, most of all of them do that, uh, but it's critical. And ask about it. I know Dr. Varula, a pediatrician in town, he puts the kids right in front of the computer, a big computer he's got, and shows them a graph, and he shows the height and the weight, and they look at it together. If it's off, him and the, the, the child have a conversation, and then he brings the mother in, and they have another conversation, and then he sees them back in a month, and we, they do it all over again. So a pediatrician needs to be a, a wellness doctor. We all need to be wellness doctors. Even as a neurosurgeon, I felt I needed to be a wellness doctor. I might have been even a pain in the neck wellness doctor because they came to see me for one thing. I always got into wellness one way or another. I mean, I told people to do, uh, do push-ups and how to jog and gave them books and DVDs and CDs. That, that's just me. I probably maybe overdid it, but I sure got a lot of people well. Uh, so, and to find out the very low density LDL caused by fructose, the most important one, you can run a Nuclear Magnetic Resonance Test, NMR. Not all labs do that. You got to just persist to your doctor and say, I want that test. Is what is not part of the routine. Well, I, I'm going to pay for it because you want to know these are the very small particles. I mean, we're talking about, you know, very small particles uh, and that tough to test otherwise. So, but to test them through an MRR test, you'll find out, you know, you, you want very low uh, 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 NMR count because that tells you your future. In other words, uh, the cholesterol isn't as bad as we think it is. Studies have been to show um, that only uh, half the people have a heart attack have elevated cholesterol. They're being to show people have very low cholesterol have increased memory loss and dementia. Remember, your brain is 20% cholesterol, 70% fat. Cholesterol is in every membrane, every cell of your body. So who's the enemy around here? Fat? It's very low density LDL and blood sugar that forms ages. Those are your enemies. Those need to be uh, uh, tested. You need to know those figures. And, uh, and not at age 35, as soon as you can get them and then keep track of them. Uh, and uh, and uh, 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 f follow them. And uh, so uh, we've learned the gluten story a little bit. It's genetically modified. And, uh, and like I said, you can call, save yourself a lot of trouble by, by uh, just cutting gluten out of your life and weight will tr fall off you. Even if you don't have celiac disease, you don't have gluten sensitivity, most of these people are way underdiagnosed. I've diagnosed two or three people just in Starbucks <laughs> who had advanced, advanced gluten sensitivity with tumors in their belly and everything else. They cut out the gluten and everything cleared up and they're perfectly normal, just like the lady I met yesterday, perfect stranger, uh, uh, started talking to me. Uh, and, and, and a very fascinating uh, uh, story. Uh, and uh, so, uh, we uh, watch out for wheat, but we have good fats, uh, actually. So uh, uh, Dr. Perlmutter in this book would say that many neurology diseases uh, are associated uh, with uh, uh, gluten sensitivity uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, with, with gluten itself. And if you have any kind of a neurology disease, they don't know why you have it. It could be uh, when they think you've got MS or you're having seizures, even migraine headaches, rash, uh, rashes, some forms of heart disease, liver disease, bowel disease uh, uh, are related uh, to gluten. So to have this 
uh, needs to, we need to increase the rate of testing of this uh, among neurologists, uh, I, I think it's critical. I think it's very important. Uh, and Dr. Perlmutter who wrote this book, uh, I, I looked at his background. His father's a neurosurgeon, and, and he studied even with uh, the, one of the original, uh, the one who discovered brain cells, Cajal, in Spain. He studied with him. I mean, this is a very informed uh, in, individual. Uh, and uh, the, uh, so uh, good fats improve your brain function. Uh, and, uh, and I already uh, uh, mentioned to you uh, how critical it is to check your serum uh, uh, insulin. And, and, I th and, uh, and half the people around here uh, and across the nation and across the world have diabetes. It's a, obesity is an international epidemic. It's an epidemic because they're all eating this genetically modified wheat and, and they're eating uh, fast foods. In South Korea, they used to eat 40% white rice. That's, eight, that's about 80% uh, on the glycemic index. The glycemic index, which I need to talk about in a minute here, is uh, you, you eat a food, a carbohydrate, and, the, and how quickly it raises your blood sugar uh, is tells the glycemic index. Like, like white bread uh, would be a 90. White, white, white bread uh, would be a 90. Instantly, in, interestingly enough, uh, uh, sucrose, table sugar, is only a 40. Why is that? It's sugar. You know, I told you now why, why it's only 40, because of fructose. It doesn't raise the blood sugar. It goes straight to the liver. So sucrose is only 40, yeah. White rice uh, is an 80. Brown rice is a 70. You're eating sugar, you're eating sugar. A lot of the pastas are, are, are really the same. So you like to eat in the glycemic index, you know about 50 or under most of the time. There can always be exceptions. It doesn't have to be uh, uh, 100%. Uh, so this VLDL and, and the high sugar and the fructose cause inflammation, glycation. Remember, we talked about uh, advanced glycation uh, products, which are deposited all over the body. It's called oxi oxidation. It's a browning. Uh, it's a frying uh, 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 that you can uh, do. That's why the reason you don't want to eat fried foods because that's oxidation and glycation. And it's, not, it's obviously, so you can have endogenous frying of your body, okay, but also exogenous. That is, you take, you, uh, uh, take, take it in. Your body is rusting. Uh, statins are not always the answer uh, because they reduce maybe the cholesterol level, reduce inflammation, but you need some cholesterol. Your body makes 2,000 uh, uh, grams of a day, and the, the amount you take from the outside uh, is, is insignificant uh, compared to that. Uh, so uh, there's a firestorm uh, occurring uh, uh, in our body, and we need to, we need to turn it off. Uh, so uh, starting to summarize this a little bit, and, and, and these gluten products, too, uh, have morphine-like products in them, not quite as strong as they morphine we usually talk about, but, but it's like eating one donut. Oh, it's a bliss. I feel wonderful. It doesn't turn the appetite off, and you want to keep on eating because you feel so great. It's because of the gluteomorphine in it that goes to the brain and makes you uh, feel good. Uh, and to the point that a lot of people are addicted to sugar. Significant people are addicted to sugar, and they need to follow, uh, you know, maybe a few weeks detox, essentially, uh, to get off of uh, the sugar, but that can be done uh, quickly, uh, pretty quickly. So in summary, uh, really, uh, what uh, are we saying? Uh, that uh, wheat products, because of uh, gluten and the amylopectin A, uh, causing uh, a fatty liver, uh, uh, in the ages, the, aggregate, the uh, advanced glycation uh, end products cause a significant neurologic disease. So in essence, we, uh, we have a grain brain, a lot of uh, neurologic disease. Uh, uh, and this all can be avoided. Uh, and uh, I, I love you for listening to me. Listen to other lectures given on a regular basis uh, on this program. Uh, and uh, I think I, I try to educate you. I do this because I love you. I do this because I love you. It's a lot of fun for me, and, uh, and I indeed do what I try to teach you. Maybe years ago I did, and uh, you have a great and a wonderful day, and maybe in a week or two the sun will come out. 